Hey guys, this is Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to put together a field package in AutoCAD. And I've done some other videos, did a series of seven or eight videos about how I put together field packages using Inkscape, which is an open source vector graphics editor. But in this video, or it might end up being a couple of videos, I'm going to show you how I do that in CAD. So I'm putting together a field package for some work we're going to do out at a little community gardens uh, with my company is doing some volunteer work out there and so i need to go out we're going to do some control work get some off-site control and we got a little topo to do they're redoing one of the garden areas so we're we're going to do some topo so they can hand that to the team that's going to be doing the garden design so this is the drawing template that i have open in autocad that i use for field package exhibits or plans here at my day job. So you can see I've got this is the, the main sheet where the exhibit goes with some instructions for the crew. And then I've got some sheets set up for field sketches. I try and send out with the crew, make it easy for them to do a sketch. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some data in our drawing. We're going to insert some of the existing control points and then drop in an aerial background. Okay, before we do that, though, we're going to come over here and check our drawing settings. And I realize I go too fast, so I have the tool space open here. Let me show you how to get that open. If you're in Civil, AutoCAD Civil 3D, go to General, Tool Space. We'll open up your tool space. And then uh, you want to be on the Settings tab, not the Prospector tab. Settings tab. We're going to right-click on that and say Edit Drawing Settings. We want to make sure this is set to the right coordinate system and units. It is. We're in U.S. Survey Feet. California NAT 83 zone 3. That's the right coordinate system. So I'll say OK. And the reason we want to have the right coordinate system, one of the reasons is uh, we're going to use AutoCAD's built in aerial map background uh, feature, the geolocation feature, and we need to have the right coordinate system set to, to get that to work. But before we put in the background image, we're going to insert our existing control points. And I want to make sure that we do that on the right layer. So I don't see a good layer for that right now in the drawing so I'm going to make a new layer and we're going to call it uh, VJSD actually I'm not going to call it that uh, GISD is what I use for GIS data uh, we're going to call it V control points okay and I'm going to make it blue and we'll make that the current layer okay and then we're going to come over to the points menu and we're going to go down to import export points click import points I'm gonna to browse to my CSV file okay so it should be in this file for primary control we'll open that we want to make sure that we pick point northern easting elevation description and it looks good there I'm gonna hit OK okay so we've got my existing control points in the drawing now looks like we got a duplicate here okay so the next thing I want to do is get the aerial background in place so to do that I'm gonna come over to the geolocation tab where it says map off, I'm going to say map aerial, and then we're going to give that a minute to load. There it is. You can see the community gardens here. Okay. I'm not sure if we have any of this existing control in still, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Okay. And this is a pretty good aerial. We have a UAV aerial, but I don't think I'm going to need, need to use it. This is pretty high resolution. I think it's going to be good enough for the exhibit. Now, before I start to sketch out what I'd like the crews to do, we want to go ahead and set our drawing scale. So to do that, we're going to come over here to our first tab here, this first layout tab for the field package. This is the topo survey plan. And I'm actually going to just double click on this. And uh, we're going to call it control survey plan because that's actually what we're doing in this first part here. And then we'll have a, uh, we'll have a second sheet for the topo. Now I'm going to double click in this box here to make this, this is a viewport. If 
you click on that you can see it's a viewport and we'll make that active so we can we're looking in now on our model space you can see now I've got those points loaded and I just want to set a reasonable scale we'll try 1 to 50 so let me show you how to do that I, I know I move too fast sometimes in these videos so I'll, I'll type Z for zoom and then it gives me an option to enter the scale I'm gonna say 1 over 50 XP that's 1 inch equals 50 feet and I don't know what happened it looks like it's too small so let's try it again let's try 1 over 100 this is kind of trial and error. Okay, so it looks like 1 over 100 fits, but I know I'm going to need more room than that. So I'm going to do it one more time. We'll say 1 over 200 XP. And the reason I like to get my scale figured out now is because it's going to control some of our text heights and other items. As soon as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and update my scale bar here. Because otherwise I forget. Alright, so we know we're going to be at 1 to 200, so I'm going to go ahead and set that here on my annotation scale. You'll notice that my points adjust, their sizes adjust. Okay. And what I want to do now is we're not going to show all these existing control points. I'm only going to show a handful of these because we don't need to tie all of these. All right. I'm going to drag these out here like this. Just looks a little better, I think. And I'm actually going to come in here to my Prospector tab. And uh, you can see I've got this Guide to Control point group. I'm going to right-click on that and um, go to Include, Selection, Set, and Drawing. And I'm going to grab these guys. Hit apply and OK. Now I was hoping when I did that that these symbols would change. They didn't because I've, I've gotten overridden here. to the uh, No, it says default, so that should work. So let's see what's going on here. I was hoping those symbols would change. Yeah, for some reason that block's not coming up. So let's go ahead and fix that. We're going to say insert. And for some reason, my control symbol block's not working. So we're going to come in here and grab the standard guide to control symbol. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to drop it in there. All right, now it looks like it's, uh, it's taken the change here. You can see the labels changed. I'm still not getting my symbol though, so let's go back in here and look at this uh, point style, this guided control. We're going to edit that. It's finding everything else but those. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. All right. Let me pause for the video for a minute and try and figure this out. All right, guys, so I'm having a problem with that control point block, but. I've got another block here. We got a benchmark block we use that I can drop in here. So let's see if we can get that one to work. Yeah, that one's not working either. All right. Let me pause again and try and figure out what's wrong. All right. So I've been messing with this thing. I finally got this benchmark block to show up here as part of the point style. And you can see as part of the point label style, we've got the northing and easting and elevation plotted there as well. Just trying to drag this label out here. All right. Okay, so now that we've got that done, let's turn all let's turn on the uh, turn on the aerial again. So we'll go over here to the ribbon to geolocation and we'll show that aerial. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut this aerial. So we're going to say capture area. And we're going to just window what we want here. And that's probably good for what I'm doing. Okay, and now we can turn that off and it's only going to have to load the... Uh, it won't it won't keep loading the image it's gonna be limited to what we've got here okay so we can come back into our 
layout tab here. First layout tab, and we'll pull this up a little. Okay. And I'm actually going to adjust this just a little more because I want to try and get some control on these surrounding streets. So I think I'm going to put it about right there. And then we'll have to slide this point label over. All right. I'm actually going to get rid of these because I don't think they're, we don't have those. We weren't able to find those last time we were out. Okay, so now I want to do is I just want to add some symbols where I'd like the guys to put some new control. So we're going to go ahead and insert a block to do that. And let's see here. We're going to use that same benchmark block. And since I'm at 200 on my scale, uh, we need to scale it up by 200. See, I'm a little off on my size there. So, but that's all right for what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to see, I'd like to try and get a control point in there. And I'd like to try and get one down here at this intersection. And then I'd like to try and get one at this inter intersection. And then maybe try for one. I'm going to go corner of the parking lot here, and one over here at this corner, okay? So let's see how those look. Okay, so those are in there now. Now we need to go ahead and label them. So to do that, I'm going to run this command called multi-leader. Let's get on a good layer first. Uh, let's go into our layers here. Let's see what layers did we put. Those are on the right layer, so let's go to... So I'm going to use this V exhibit text layer. Sorry, I should have made that the current layer there. Make that current. And we're going to say M leader. And we're going to say proposed control point location. Number one, because I'm going to let the field crews pick the number there. Now you can see it's way too small, obviously. It's because our scale is set to zero. So we're going to say make that 200. I want the arrowhead to be a tenth, usually. Usually shorten that landing distance down to. And text height, I like to be a tenth of the scale. And then I also like the, because we've got the aerial on, I'm going to turn on this background mask here. Multi leaders are super cool. And uh, that looks pretty good right there. We'll leave that right there. And we've got another one down here. And we're just going to flip that bad boy around here. And we're going to say number two. Now you notice when I switch the orientation there, it, it puts that underline there, which I hate. So to fix that, we're going to say... Uh, this right attachment here needs to be middle of the top line. So that now it looks like the other one. Okay, and we're going to run the copy command. And we're going to pull up number three. And we got a couple more. This will be a little bit of a tight fit. We might have to come back and adjust this one. We'll see.
All right, now let's check this. I'm actually going to move that over to the midpoint. It looks a little better. Okay, let's go ahead and check this, see how it looks in here. Oh, it looks like that label fit, barely. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that the way it is. Okay, all these all fit. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to come over and we're going to drop in some street names. So let's do that. So to do the street names, I'm just going to run the mtex command. And I'm going to drop in a set of text here. It's got this really funky font by default, but that's okay. And we're going to call this some road for now. And then we'll click that. And uh, we don't want ghost. We want standard. And I need to go in there and clean up those fonts. And I'm going to make this uh, justification middle center. Uh, that's what I like for road labels. I'm just I'm trying to grab this little triangle here and shrink this down a little. And then we're going to put a background mask on that too. We're going to say use the background color. As you can see, I got a mask there now. That's why I was trying to shrink this a little bit. All right, now we need to figure out what road these are, so what roads, so we can label them. So let, let me pause the video. I'll figure out those road names. All right, so I got some road names here now. We can drop in, so we'll move this over. And uh, let's see, this is uh, March Banks Drive. I'm just putting some road names in here so the crew can, field crew can navigate to the site. And once I do that, I'll run the T orient command. And uh, we'll just line that up with the road. Maybe. <laughs> it keeps grabbing that insert snap. Sometimes if you do that, you got to type in none to get it to go where you want. All right, now that I have that first one, I'm going to try and use a menu for you guys. We can go to Edit Copy, and uh, we'll drag the oop, Edit Copy, select that text. Something's not going on. Let's see, Edit Copy. Oh. Then it wants me to do an edit paste, which is fine. Okay, and uh, so let's just type in this street name. Is uh, this is Heather Drive? Okay, and then we can run that same T orient command, which is also under Express Text. I think it's here. Let's see. Nope. Somebody's gonna have to tell me where the T orient command is because I don't know in the menus. <laughs> so I just type it in. I thought it was an Express Tools menu item, but I don't see it there. All right. Okay, so got Heather Drive there. All right, and let's see. We got another road at the top. This is San Carlos Drive. So I can pull this over here. Edit the text, but just a double click there. And we'll type in Teorian again, run that command. Line it up with the road. Looks pretty good, pretty close to the middle. All right, now those uh, labels look a little small, so I'm going to select all three of those with the left click. And the height needs to be 20, 20 feet, 20 units, because we've got a 1 to 200 drawing. And then we'll stretch this one out a little bit. Stretch these out again. Probably leave that one. All right, we'll check those labels in our layout. Looks good. You can see all of them. They aren't cut off. I think that's enough road labels. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save our drawing. Now, the map view is basically done for the control. What I need to do now is come in and, and uh, edit these notes here so that the guys know what they're doing. Give them a punch list, explain site access, that kind of thing. So uh, we will do that here in just a minute.